In the 21st century, discussions about well-being, happiness and mental health are often spoken about. We are bombarded with advertisements and campaigns about these ideals, and when speaking about happiness, religion is eventually brought into the conversation. In the United States, actively religious people are more likely to describe themselves as very happy in comparison to those who are less religious in the US. The same study tells us that people who are active in religious congregations tend to be happier and more civically engaged than those who are unaffiliated to a religion. This is a point worth noting given that we are told by particular intellectuals like Christopher Hitchens that religion is evil and he says it poisons everything. In this video we'll be looking at why religious people are happier and attempt to understand the psychological, spiritual and sociological basis for this occurrence. All videos on this channel are properly researched and without further ado, you're watching All Things Humanities. In the United States, actively religious people are more likely to describe themselves as very happy in comparison to those who are less religious in the US. If it is true that participation in a religious community is clearly linked with higher levels of happiness, this may suggest that societies with declining levels of religious engagement could be at risk for declines in personal and societal well-being. While the data represented indicates that there are links between religious activity and certain measures of well-being in many countries, the numbers do not prove that going to religious services is directly responsible for improving people's lives. Rather, it could be that certain kinds of people tend to be active in multiple types of activities, many of which provide psychological or physical benefits. However, the famous Jordan Peterson argues that religious people are generally happier because of the link between religious belief and meaning. Peterson argues that the church and its rituals and tradition are maintained and this is something that human beings can gravitate to. Here's a clip of Jordan Peterson making this point clear. Why do people go to church? Right. Because that's what's going well, on. Why should they? Right. Because that's a discussion. So Jonathan took me to an Orthodox uh, um, uh, ceremony in Seattle. And uh, like I wasn't into it. Um, I, I, I found it, it grated on me. Um, You're like a 10 year old boy that we we're telling to stop yeah. moving. Yeah, yeah, stop, that's right. Stop, stop. So that was my Freudian fixations. Like, <laughs> you're 10. Stop and wiggling. Yeah, yeah, stop wiggling. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> no kidding. But, um, you know, there's been a lot of water under the bridge since mm. then, man. And I went to an Orthodox uh, uh, mass here a couple of weeks ago and I found it unbelievable. And a Catholic one a week before that. I was down at uh, Franciscan University and I found it unbelievably soothing which was very much unlike the reactions I've had before. And that was partly, well, for complicated reasons, because I actually find any place that isn't a bloody nightmarish catastrophe soothing now. <laughs> and so uh, I mean that, man. And, but there was more to it than that, too. It was because I, I also did develop, and partly as a consequence of our discussions, a deeper appreciation for what was happening in the ritual itself. And, and also more tolerance for whatever inadequacies I might perceive, you know. And partly that's also a realization. You know, lots of modern people say, well, I don't go to church because I don't believe that. It's like, well, A, who cares what you believe? Like, who the hell are you anyways? Like, and why do you even care what you believe? And how's that working for you, this belief set that you theoretically have? Is how sophisticated is that? Like, you, are you Plato or what? It's like, well, here's the church and here's me and I'm right. It's like, well, no, you're not. And first and second, you don't even want to be because that's a great place to be. Like pinnacle of brilliant wisdom. It's completely <laughs> solipsistic. No tradition for me. Thank you very much. You know, I've got it all right in my head. And even if you are right that the bloody institution is chaotic and, 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 uh, decadent in some fundamental sense it's like well good there's something for you to do like there always has been throughout the entire history of mankind because that's osiris right the mm. the once great king who's fallen into disrepair it's mm. like well if the church is broken and you're the genius to see it why do you go fix it well then you might say well we'll just abandon it it's like okay well fine you're going to get rid of that eh? you're going to get rid of marriage you're going to get rid of funerals you're going to get rid of christmas you're going to get rid of any sense of sacred time. You're going to dispense with the whole 
history of what Judeo-Christian thought. You're going to dispense with the idea of the sacred nature of the individual. Like, how far are you willing to go with this? And believe me, that question is right in front of you. Because there's a wave of radicals who are asking you at every moment, what makes you so sure that there's a difference between a man and a woman? Like, no, there isn't. Or the yes, there is when we want there to be, and no, there isn't when we don't want there to be. You saw that with the Supreme Court um, appointment. It's like, we have to have a woman. But there's no such thing as a woman. Mm. It's like... <laughs> and so, yeah, you... <laughs> You Frenchmen, you know, you've, you've abandoned your Catholicism. You think the Catholics, they were crazy. It's like you ain't seen nothing yet. In this clip, Peterson makes it clear that religious traditions make people happy. The commitment to truth, tradition, and striving towards the highest ideal is something that many people around the world find meaning in and therefore happiness in. Peterson also recognizes that if individuals just chase happiness, they will fall into a state of decay. So perhaps Peterson shows how the life of a religious person balances both good and evil to create a fulfilling life of meaning. But whatever the explanation may be, more than one third of actively religious adults describe themselves as very happy compared with just a quarter of both inactive and unaffiliated Americans. The gaps are striking. In Australia, for example, 45% of actively religious adults say that they are very happy, compared with 32% of inactives and 33% of unaffiliated people. And there is no country in which the data shows that actives are significantly less happy than others. These views really go to show how important religion is for the search for meaning and how it can contribute to happiness. We do live in a secular age where religion is seen as lame and restrictive, but the evidence points to the contrary. After all, human beings throughout history have been obsessed with religious symbolism, as all cultures aim to conceptualize the differences between good and evil through supernatural beings like gods, goddesses, and demons. It really shows how religious participation does contribute to meaning and happiness, and for this reason, it is worth preserving. This is not to say that religion hasn't been misused over history, all we have to look at is the Catholic Church and the lead up to the Protestant Reformation. But when it comes to active religious participation, it has a significant impact on the wellness of human beings.